Hello, everyone. Uh, so on this Friday afternoon, I thought um, we'd look at this topic of, um, you know, not really knowing what it is you want or what your dreams are uh, for life. And this often comes up with my clients, actually, because part of the work I do is to begin in uncovering um, a sense of, okay, this is what I want to do with my life now. This is the, is this the lemonade I want to make after the lemonade, uh, lemons that I was given? But often clients are, they only have sort of like a hazy view of something, um, but they're not able to name it with clarity. So where does this come from? Uh, if you've experienced this, um, you know, maybe some of these things will, will resonate with you. Um, it may result, you know, if you come from a narcissistic family system, of never actually being asked in childhood what you want, but being given or told instead. Um, you know, you were given you were given things from your parents, but never really asked what, what you want. Uh, you were given expectations from your parents uh, that were sort of under the guise of, if you do this, you'll make me happy and therefore you'll be happy. Uh, that became your, your driving force. There was a sense of, you know, you get what you're given as a channel. Um, What's on offer is on offer and nothing more. Your, your raison d'etre as a child uh, became a sense of sort of understanding that you're there to serve the mission of the parent, the narcissistic parent, um, and that is to keep them happy. That became your goal, your chief aim for your life was to... Um, to not have many wants or to have the bare minimum wants so that it wouldn't be a burden uh, on anyone else or, you know, appear to be ungrateful for what you had. You were afraid to ask for your needs or wishes uh, for fear of the reaction or that you would be shamed and told you were being selfish or ungrateful. Because narcissistic parents can take things like this quite personally, that you're criticizing them um, as a parent. So from this, you know, the child learns to accept what life what life gives it. You know, you you learn to be grateful, but to be grateful for what you're given, not to go for the life that you dream on. It's got to still be within the remit of serving the narcissistic parent, of, of, of still pandering somehow to their mission uh, out of a debt and in, an indebtedness to them, which is often fostered. So you may not even begin to allow yourself to imagine a life free of them. What would that look like? That could be a, squ a scary thing. Uh, to even contemplate for people only just leaving a narcissistic relationship. They can often be a sense of uh, that that allowing oneself to dream is is just that, a dream. That reality will never match it, so there's no point in dreaming. Uh, it'll only lead to disappointment. And this can come from having been shamed, perhaps for having big dreams in childhood, or being mocked, or you know, laughed at, or or even told, "Gosh, you know, you're quite big-headed, aren't you?" Gosh, oh yes, of course. You know, only the best for you. So, you know, sort of comments. Um, and it's interesting because you know, this whole way of looking at things it can also be backed up. Uh, by children who come from religious families where there is an narcissistic parent as well. Um, you know, there's almost the the teaching that, you know, you're just grateful for what God has given you. It's the same message, isn't it? Just be grateful for what your parent has given you and don't want any more. Just be grateful for what God has given you and, and get on with it, you know? 
I mean, of course, it is good. To, it is good to be grateful. I'm not saying that. But, you know, it's also a sign of healthy separation and individuation to have dreams for your life. It's a sign of leaving your parents' story with them and being able to spread your own wings and, and, and go for adventure or whatever it is you're wanting. It's, it's key to really cultivate your own life beyond their story. That's what being an adult is, actually. That's what leaving the home is all about, is, is creating your own story. Um, this really hit home for me, actually. Um, my father was um, tragically killed a few years ago, and it was you know, such a shock. Um, and since then, it really sparked in me this uh, determination to live, to really live this life because, you know, it it is precious. Um, and that's what I'm trying to get across in this in this video today, actually. You know, one of the, the travesties of, of narcissistic abuse is that it does cut people off from believing in their own potential. It cuts them off from their confidence. It cuts them off from dreaming um, because the narcissist comes in and takes over all of that. Um, and, and the person ends up leading a life that can often feel like the potential is there, but I never got to, to go for it. So... I wonder, I wonder what it would be like if you were to let yourself spend five minutes every day just imagining the life of your wildest dreams. I mean, really allow yourself to dream and spend just those minutes feeling what it might feel like. Feel like. And you might not see it clearly at first. That's okay. It's more a feeling. Uh, that feeling of freedom and and in many ways not just being grateful for what I have that's important but there's also another part to that it's also being full of faith for the desires and dreams I have you know choosing not to be a victim of that but rather a creator and that really is being in the image of God. <laughs> um, and I realize I've brought God into this again. You know, I am a spiritual uh, woman. I'm not really of any faith uh, in particular. Um, however, I am a very spiritual woman and, and Christian in my, um, in my foundations uh, and in my heart. Um, okay, everyone, on that note, have a wonderful weekend and I shall see you next week for some more uh, live videos. And if you're watching on uh, YouTube, please do subscribe and comment. Thanks, everybody. Take care now.